Hi guys, my name is Emily D. Simone. I am with the Garden State Film Festival, and here I have with Woo! me I, I, Yvonne, Yvonne Ruiz. Uh, excuse, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's all good. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's a beautiful day here in uh, Toronto, and by beautiful, I mean gross. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. But I think we have the same weather. I think we have the same weather. It's like cloudy and overcast and kind of cold. Um, here, I don't know if it's it's cloudy in Jersey today. Um, I haven't been outside. But um, <laughs> so, um, can you tell our, you know, our viewers a bit about um, your film share? Yeah. Um, so I actually belong to like this collective of actors called the Actors Place. And it's just, we, we're kind of like an acting gym slash kind of a uh, little kind of like group of actors. And periodically we challenge ourselves like, hey man, let's just make a movie. Let's, let's we gotta make a movie because it's, uh, it's way too easy as an actor to uh, just wait for your agent to call, you know? And taking charge of, uh, we wanna take charge of our careers, take charge and create for the sake of creating. So me, myself, excuse me, myself and a couple of other actors, uh, we this, we basically went to this amazing location called uh it's called the water treatment plant in toronto but it's like this building from like the 1920s and it's right on the edge of the water and it's very imposing and big and it's a public space and there's a park and waves and anyway we got there and we're like we got to shoot during the magic hour and we got together and we made about four movies in three hours wow and we did it all there was uh, my brian who was the film uh the director of photography slash our director myself and michaela and two other actors that but they weren't in this particular scene and what we would do is we would huddle we would improvise uh we would get an idea we would improvise it we'd get a little we'd agree on dialogue we'd figure out what's the point of the story what what, what can we say and and then we just film it and we would keep doing it until we got it to a place where we were all happy, where the color was good, the dialogue was great, where the sound was good, et cetera. And then once we did that, we moved on until it got too dark. And Cher was actually the very last one when we were exhausted and we were like, I don't even think we should bother. This one sucks. Um, but then, I was, you know, but I was like, no, we got we to gotta make this happen. We got to make this happen. Look at the light. Look at the light. And in fact, the background, that's not, it's, it's supposed to be an apartment building. That's actually the front entrance to the, to the water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. So um, can you tell me a bit about the premise of Share for your, for your audience? Yeah, well, oh man, so you've had your heart broken, right? Horribly, yep. Yeah, yeah, and then you see that person? Mm-hmm. The idea was um, there was a the the first woman that broke my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I hate her to death, and because uh, she broke my heart. Anyway, so uh, about oh God, maybe like four or five years after she had broken my heart in the worst way, mm -hmm. she moved to my neighborhood, and I saw okay. her constantly. Okay. Morning. You want to get a, a? I'm gonna go get a coffee today, and my day's ruined because I have to see this horrible. Can you bleep me or is this live? No, Bad you're like, <laughs> this is all live. <laughs> don't worry, I won't, you don't bleep, bleep. That's, you all know what I'm saying. You all know what I'm saying. Okay, so yeah. And so when we were thinking about like, we wanted, we, we kind of gave ourselves a theme of heartbreak. We did a scene about like danger. We did a scene about like just these overriding themes. And so we decided mm -hmm. to do a scene about heartbreak. And that's the first thing that popped into my head. And then because at the same time, while I was saying we got to film one more, everyone else had their phones out looking for Ubers because it's the treatment plan is a little out, out like just at the edge of the city. Uh, we thought it, we combined it with the idea of back in the day, you know, the, the concept of an Uber pool, like you're sharing an Uber. Okay. Or you're both picking up an Uber from the exact same spot. Mm. And what would that look like? Um, you're starting your night and you see this person that broke your heart and you have to have like a civil conversation with them. Okay. And that was the, that's the premise. So what was, uh, what was it like, uh, filming this? Like, like what was the process? Like, can you tell our, our viewers? Yeah. Yeah. So because we had improvised the scene several times to get to a point where we had like some fun, like some good dialogue, um, but we were never consistent. So we filmed it a few times and every time it was a bit melodramatic. Um, and as the, the, you know, 
as an actor is sometimes you get a little neurotic. And so I just kept thinking about this girl and I kept thinking about the last time I saw her. And, um, you know, when every time she said, oh, hi, hey, how are you? How's it going? I wanted to be like, you fucking bitch, you ruined my life. I'm heartbroken. How the fuck do you think, you know, that's, that's like, that's what was in my heart. But I would always be like, good, good. How are you? And uh -huh. so in the session, I decided to just say like, uh, I, I didn't tell Michaela I was doing it. She's like, how's everything going? Like, how do you think I'm feeling? I'm, I'm heartbroken. And I didn't tell her I was going to say that. And because I was really feeling it, because I was thinking about this girl, I was imagining Michaela being this girl, Michaela's the other actor. And then that response that she gave was very nice. And afterwards, she's like, you know, you made me feel terrible, even though we have never dated, we're just friends. Right, right. She, she felt that guilt of when she had done it to someone. Because mm -hmm. we've all, as much as I hate this girl for breaking my heart, I'm, I've broken people's hearts. Uh, I mean, I, you know, it's like we you, will be on both ends of the stick. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've definitely broken someone's heart and I've had someone break mine and now it's just, it's life. Um, so when- Can, you, can I just tell you something? Can I, can I just, that maybe you want to hear a beautiful line? Sure. We're all, every single one of us is the villain in someone else's story. I believe that. I'm not sure where that came from. I'm sure, I don't know if you've heard it before, but that's the first yeah. time. I've no, I, I, it's true. Um, people that ever, we are a different um, piece of uh, someone's story, you know? Um, when did you end up uh, filming Cher? In 2020. Oh, uh, when we were allowed to go outside. During during the pandemic. 20, wait, 2020 or 2020? 2021, sorry, 2021 okay. when we were allowed to go outside. Um, okay. I get that that whole time period is, uh, I remember we were all allowed to go. That's why we filmed it all outside because we were like, mm -hmm. oh, we we're finally allowed to like connect, talk with each other. The it was The quarantine stuff was way hard, more hardcore in Toronto than it was in other places. So I think that was in, it might've been August or September of 2021. Okay. Well, and uh, how was, so um, I'm not very familiar with what Canada's like restrictions, you know, are slash were like somewhat yeah. of what I, like heard in the media, but I mean, as a Canadian or someone at least that was staying, you are Canadian. Yeah. Um, so Canadian staying, you know, it, under those regulations, how did that affect your filming process? It wasn't, well, it wasn't on like a structural level that it affected the process. It was more on a social level that it affected the process. So okay. we all saw each other and we were like, we, we were like, we have to be outside. We have to be outside. We have to be outside. Mm -hmm. And one of our, one of us, one of our friends was like, I'm going to wear a mask the whole time. Cool. No problem. And it was more like the first, here's the thing. As much as you try and do it, when we be um, the habits from before 2020 don't disappear. Like people were afraid that, oh, no one will ever blow out candles again. Yeah, well, that's bullshit because we've all been blowing out candles and no one cares anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Or we're going to wash our hands every single time we come back into the house. Right? Like, yeah, I'm sure we all do that. Yeah, we all do that. Oh, yeah. I've never gone, you know, I've never done that since 2020. Of course I haven't, right? But the initial maybe 40 minutes was a very kind of like, standoffish everyone keep distance we have to figure it out then by the end of the session we, we, you can't help but resist social norms and we fell back into the social norms of before you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's kind of the best way i can describe the filming of it uh how did you find your cast and your crew so we were all we're an actors collective so i run this thing it's called the actors place the actors place .org. um and <laughs> we get together we run these kind of like gym sessions mm -hmm. every week use a couple before 2020 was a couple times a week now we're just doing once a week where we just get together and act and okay. periodically um you know i'll get together with a few friends be like yo man let's make something this weekend let's just film and because we have this network what will typically happen is one person will email like 10 of us and be like yo i got this camera i'm really loving it. I'm, I'm playing with it let's make a movie let's just film something let's just make let's create for the sake yeah. of creation and and you know four like nine people will say yes five people will say they can make it on that day and three of them will show up you know as is with people you know what i mean and so that's what happened um wow. and then we it was actually brian the director of photography and director who really was the person who wanted to do this because he found the location and he's like oh, let's make it this location um he's very shy though he so he says he didn't want to be here today um 
but that's uh but that was his uh it was all his brainchild and then whoever yeah <laughs> yeah and we did like i said i i i'm not sure if i submitted the other ones to you we did a couple of films that day with the other actor um and they were i i personally thought that out of the five we made i think we made five i can't remember out of the five we made three of them were badass all of them were short because we wanted the other thing is we wanted to be like bite size you know so why did you choose the garden state film festival um a couple of reasons so number one we wanted to reach out to film festivals that had a bit of a, um, and I hope you'll take this as the compliment that I mean, a bohemian vibe. Mm -hmm. um, like, so because the movie, there isn't a, like our movie is very short and it, there isn't like some deep experimental filming process. We wanted to have uh, join a film festival that seemed to have a bit of um, an aesthetic. And that aesthetic was a, a, a grassroots kind of environment. So, you know, when I looked at some of your previous uh, film festivals, it looked like you were for the little the, the little director, the, the, not necessarily the new director, but the unsung heroes, the people who make for yeah. the sake of making. Okay. And mm -hmm. that bohemian kind of vibe was like, you know, I was talking to Brian about it. I was like, well, this, this, this would be perfect for us, you know? Um, how does, sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say, how does it feel to be accepted into the Garden State? Um, you know what? It, it's very humbling because Cher was rejected by every other festival we submitted to. Oh, wow. And um, we had, I had uh, kind of given up on it as a fun project that we did that I was very proud of, to be honest with you. I, mm -hmm. um, and as arrogant as this sounds, I thought uh, the, the cinematography was great. Um, I thought the dialogue was great. And I thought both of myself and Michaela's performances were very grounded, but kind of I don't know. I watch it and I can usually when I watch myself, I'm like, that looks so forced. That time I was like, God damn, Yvonne, you brought some pain out in that. You brought some pain. Um, and so when you guys said yes, you know, I'll be honest with you. I submitted saying, oh, they'll probably say no, because my confidence was low on the project. And to be accepted made it feel like, OK, good, because maybe there is something to this little this little short film that we made. You know? I mean, so do you have any advice for other filmmakers people that are coming in new or or you know just starting out and don't have much experience with it um you, you see this can you see that yes you, you see that calluses yes i do um it's important to build calluses mm -hmm. um everything everyone in the entertainment industry will tell you you have to be tough and people think that being tough means not being like just the rejection doesn't bother you. The rejection always bothers you, mm -hmm. but you can build a calluses to it. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, Mark Duplass had uh, this great saying, saying, make lots of shitty movies until you make a good one. And like I said, that day we filmed five films, two of them, you know. You got, you got yourself but, something. But through the process of creation, we discovered things and it's really this in particular, um, Emily, this has been a, you guys accepting us has been in particular a very um, motivational thing for me because mm -hmm. I've had this idea that I gave up on for a romantic, uh, a coming of age story for people, uh, but it's people in their 60s. And uh, it's, it's this beautiful story that I, I don't know, I thought up one day and I love it and I'd given up doing it because I was like, you know, no one, no one likes any of the films I make. In fact, I've made a bunch of films and submitted to festivals and none of them have been expected anywhere. So I thought like, I, why even bother? But this has kind of reignited a little bit of a spark in me to, if not write a feature film, write a treatment for a feature film for this uh, story. Mm -hmm. That is, I think it's fucking amazing. Sorry, I keep swearing. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's an amazing story and I'm kind of reinvigorated to pursue it now. Well, Yvonne, thank you so much for taking the time with us today um, and for, you know, talking about your film with all of our viewers. Um, we're really excited. It's my pleasure for having me. Your film. So, guys, you can see the film Share on Sunday, March 26th at Asbury Lanes from 2.45 p.m. to 4.45 p.m. Thank you yeah, again so much, Yvonne. Have a great rest of It's going to be a great montage, and I'm going to try and make it out, actually, because I will be in the States in March. So I'm going to make an effort, um, not, you know, my film's going to be like a little tiny fraction of it, but to come out, support. Hey, um, absolutely. You know, maybe take a photo or two. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see you there. I'd love to be there. Yeah. And I'm very excited for, um, I want to say thank you again 
for not only the opportunity to talk to you today, but for giving this little piece of love, um, this little less than two minutes piece of love, um, an audience. So I hope everyone who watches it um, enjoys it. Uh, have a great day, Yvonne. We're happy to have you. Thanks, Emily. Bye.